Not many quarterbacks get the opportunity to make the playoffs in their first season, especially when you're a seventh round draft pick. Shoot, many seventh rounders hardly even get the chance to start. But in the 2022 NFL Draft, the very last pick, Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy, has become one of the most surprising talents in the NFL in his very first season. So how does that happen? What are the obstacles Purdy had to overcome to get the starting job? And what is it that makes him so special? This is the story of Brock Purdy. Mr. Irrelevant was born in Queen Creek, Arizona as the middle child to parents Sean and Carrie Purdy. He played quarterback in high school at the newly opened Perry High in Gilbert, Arizona, where he helped his team to a state championship game in back-to-back -back seasons in 2016 and 2017. Sadly, they lost both of those games, but Purdy was able to elevate the team and help them compete with some of the biggest high school teams in Arizona. Purdy's efforts didn't go unnoticed. He was named the State Gatorade Player of the Year and the Arizona Republic's High School Football Player of the Year, which would help his case when it came to college football recruiting. Purdy was listed as a consensus three-star recruit. He was a talented quarterback who received offers from several programs, including Iowa State, Kansas, Texas A&M, and most notably, Alabama. The Alabama visit meant a conversation with legendary college head coach Nick Saban, who has brought countless successes to the Crimson Tide program and developed some of the best quarterbacks in football in recent years. Saban was blunt with Purdy, telling him how he was below average in height, his arm strength is whatever, and his accuracy is average. Purdy wasn't best pleased with the visit, and when he returned to his high school coach, Preston Jones, he told him that he was pretty sure Saban didn't know who he was. See, the accuracy of his game is what Brock Purdy is most proud of, and it's what he depends on when he's out on the field. When Saban claimed that his accuracy was average, Purdy was convinced that the Bama coach hadn't watched him play. Now, of course, being a three-star recruit at the quarterback position gives you a mountain to climb when it comes to programs like Alabama. They attract all the best five-star recruits in the nation, and Alabama is particularly well-known for how dominant they are in recruiting. Purdy's career was heading in a different route though, and less than two weeks after his Alabama visit, he announced his commitment to the Iowa State Cyclones. When he arrived, Purdy had plenty of work to do. He was a three-star freshman who hadn't enrolled early and had been recruited alongside another quarterback in Real Mitchell, who was a dual-threat quarterback from St. John Bosco in California. Brock Purdy got to work on day one, running sprints at the program's indoor facility by himself. Within a few days, several other freshmen had joined him, which pointed towards the level of leadership and charisma of the young QB. He would go into his freshman year as the third string quarterback, making sure he was prepared to play no matter how slim the chance of him getting on the field might be. Then in week six, his number was called. An injury to the team starter, Kyle Kempt, that season, followed by poor performances from the backup, Zeb Nolan, gave Purdy a chance. Nolan was benched against Oklahoma State, and Purdy went out there as a freshman with a point to prove. He led touchdown scoring drives on four of his first five possessions and ended the game with 317 passing yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. Not bad for a guy coming into a game off the bench. Once Brock Purdy had gotten a taste for starting in college, he wasn't prepared to give it up. The dedicated work ethic he already had grew stronger, committed to being the hardest working player on the team, and his efforts rallied the team behind him and created a unit that played for one another. Purdy started the following week against West Virginia, and he never gave back the starting job. He was making play after play, putting his body on the line for his team, and his quarterback's coach at the time, John Gordon, who is now the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach at South Florida, recalls one particular play that showed him Purdy was special. It wasn't a pass play either. It was a scramble, and Purdy needed more yards with two defenders approaching. He lowered his shoulder and hit them before they hit him, setting his teammates into a frenzy on the sideline. They loved him, and they rallied for him, and they knew that their quarterback was going to do whatever it took to help the team win. Purdy went 7-2 as the starter for the Cyclones that season, and he would go on to start 46 consecutive games over his four-year career with the team. He had his best statistical season in 2019, throwing for 3,975 yards and 27 touchdowns, with just nine picks while scrambling for another eight touchdowns on the ground. He earned second team All Big 12 honors that year, and the following season would team up with the breakout running back Brees Hall. The emergence of Brees Hall in 2020 meant less pressure on Purdy throwing the ball, and his numbers didn't equal that of the 2019 season because of the adjustment in the scheme to accommodate Hall. That said, Purdy guided the team with consistent play and was bumped from second team All Big 12 to first team All Big 12, and the Cyclones capped the season by defeating Oregon 34-17 in the Fiesta Bowl. Purdy's final year in 2021 was the most accurate of his college career, completing over 71% of his passes while throwing for 3,200 yards and 19 touchdowns. He led the Big 12 in both completion percentage and passing yards that season, was once again named a member of the first team All Big 12, and would head for the NFL Draft, having set 32 school records at Iowa State. 
Harvey is now the school's all-time leader in pass attempts, completions, completion percentage, passing yards, and both passing and total touchdowns, in which he totaled 100. He posted 14 games with 300 plus passing yards during his career, completely smashing the previous school record of five games. Iowa State had managed a winning season in all four years with Purdy as the starter, something that was not all that common for the Cyclones. The last time they had done so was almost 100 years ago between 1923 to 1927. So if Brock Purdy had helped the Cyclones win a whole lot more than they were used to, been a three-time All Big 12 quarterback and broken 32 records at Iowa State, how come he wasn't a hot ticket in the 2022 NFL Draft? The biggest win on the scouting report was his accuracy. He was a calm pocket passer, who never looked panicked when he was flushed out of the pocket or needed to scramble, but teams had their doubts about his game. At the pro level, he didn't have the arm talent of a starting quarterback, and he was considered undersized. Scouting report after scouting report read not an NFL starter, and will struggle to see the field in the league. This is often the case for many college quarterbacks. They can play great football at the college level, but when it comes to the pros, they fall short of what's required to lead an NFL franchise. That was the expectation for Brock Purdy. He might get a shot as the third string QB in the mid to late rounds of the draft, but teams weren't scouting him to be a starter. That much was clear. As it turned out, even the scouts who'd given him a mid to late round grade in the draft had been wrong. Day three came, round four, round five, round six, and still the phone didn't ring. He sat at home with his family and waited for an opportunity. You'd have to imagine, as the picks fade in the seventh and final round, that a prospect might start to give up hope. Every pick is one less chance you've got at being drafted. So when three days have passed and there's just one pick left, those chances of being drafted are all but gone. That is, of course, unless your name is Brock Purdy, whose phone rang with the San Francisco 49ers on the clock with the very last pick in the 2022 draft. Purdy became the year's mystery relevant and celebrated with his family that he'd been given a shot. San Francisco had traded up the previous year to draft Trey Lance out of North Dakota State third overall, and the vision for the future was that Lance would be the starting quarterback for the Niners. Purdy would go in as a potential depth piece and made the roster as the third string quarterback. Despite being sat behind a first round draft pick that the Niners had given up a wealth of picks to go up and get, and a veteran in Jimmy Garoppolo, Purdy stayed focused. He committed himself to learning every inch of Kyle Shanahan's playbook and understanding the scheme should he ever need to help the team win, just as he did at Iowa State. Teammate Dre Greenlaw, who was Purdy's neighbor in the locker room, spoke of his commitment and preparation behind the scenes. He constantly shows up to practice prepared and believes in himself despite being written off and labeled mystery relevant. Purdy was determined to be more than a gimmick who got picked last in the draft and in the 2022 season. Just as it had at Iowa State, his opportunity came. Perhaps the sudden opportunity to play in his freshman year with the Cyclones prepared Brock Purdy for the moment. Anything can happen in the game of football, and even the third string guy needs to be prepared to strap up his chin strap and command the huddle. Trey Lance had been named the 49ers starter for the 2022 season with Garoppolo as the backup, but in week two, that plan was crushed when Trey Lance suffered a nasty leg injury that ended his season in an instant. Garoppolo took over, but in week seven, had to come out of the game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and Purdy had a chance to throw his first pass in the NFL. It wasn't the dream start. The Niners were down in the game, and Purdy had a pretty tall task on his hands. He only threw nine passes, completing four of them, while throwing an interception in the loss. Six weeks later in week 13, Jimmy G went down again, and this time it looked like quite a nasty foot injury. 49ers fans didn't know it yet, but what happened next shocked everybody except those who'd seen Brock Purdy work inside the facility every day since he arrived. He threw for 210 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick against the Miami Dolphins, combining with a high-level defensive performance to give the Niners the win. Jimmy Garoppolo was severely hurt, which meant Purdy was now going to be the starter. And who was he going to get his very first NFL start against? Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. The Bucs struggled in the game, as they had done for most of the season, but Purdy did everything he was asked to do, and the Niners coasted to a 35-7 win. Purdy threw 16 of 21 passes for a 76% completion rate, throwing two touchdowns in the win. He became the first ever quarterback to beat Tom Brady in his first start, and shared a moment with the legendary QB on the field after the game. Brady's own path is a similar one to Purdy's, having been selected in the sixth round and overlooked by every franchise in the league. Brady has used that as fuel for the entirety of his decorated career, and has spoken only about how that moment in his life angered him and gave him a reason to work harder than everybody else around him. Purdy used the momentum from his first career win to keep winning. Week 15 at Seattle, win. Week 16 against the Commanders, win. Week 17 at Las Vegas, win. Week 18 against Arizona, win. The Niners were headed for the playoffs, and Brock Purdy was 5-0 as the starter, and by this point, generating plenty of buzz around the league. 
to those inside the organization, Kyle Shanahan, Purdy's teammates, and everyone in the building. It was hardly surprising. They knew what he was capable of. To everybody else on the outside, Purdy was shocking the nation. San Francisco had lost both their starting quarterback and capable backup to injuries in what would typically completely derail a franchise and its goals of winning a championship. The 49ers hadn't missed a beat and looked as dangerous as anybody with a stacked defense. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, and George Kittle firing on offense, and Brock Purdy pulling the strings. But how would he perform under the pressure of the playoffs? After all, winner go home football comes with a whole new level of pressure. His response? The best game of his season so far. 332 yards and three touchdowns against Seattle to calmly dispatch the Seahawks and advance to the divisional playoff against the Cowboys, where they would win once again to set up a conference championship game against the high-flying Philadelphia Eagles. Purdy started the game poised and ready for the moment, and the footballing world watched on in amazement that the young rookie quarterback taken dead last in the NFL draft less than a year ago might be about to guide his team into the Super Bowl. It was unfathomable, as it was happening, the kind of story that makes you want to pinch yourself just to make sure it was real, but here it was. Devastatingly, Brock Purdy's story that season was robbed of the final chapter. He was hit by Eagles pass rusher Hassan Reddick in the first quarter of the game, catching his throwing arm as he pulled it back. He'd suffered an elbow injury that meant he couldn't throw, struggling with shocking pain in his arm, and it cost the 49ers the game. Without a quarterback who could throw, the Niners stumbled and crashed out of the playoffs one stop short of a return to the Super Bowl for Kyle Shanahan, and it felt like a cruel and bitter end to one of the 2022 season's most remarkable stories. Brock Purdy had gone from a guy that nobody knew, who was doomed as just another quarterback who'd hang around the league for a couple of seasons before fading into the background, like so many who'd come before him, into a playoff winning starter who went 7-0 before an injury cut him down. All of a sudden, he'd earned the respect of not only his teammates and coaches, but players and fans who love the game. Now he's expected to be the starter, bumping first round talent Trey Lance out of the starting spot. The pressure will be high for Purdy to maintain his success, this time facing defenses who know precisely who he is. Nicknamed Mr. Relevant, Purdy has put himself on the map and he's looking to write the next chapter. What are your projections for this upcoming season and for Brock's career? Do you think he's the real deal or will defensive coordinators lock him up? Tell us in the comments. Hey, you made it all the way to the end. That's very kind of you. We invite you to stick around because we are on our way to a million subs. This is just the beginning. Trust me, you're going to enjoy the ride. If you subscribe, comment with your subscriber number for us to remember. Here's to future memories. As always, thank you for watching The Halftime Show.